We've seen how joins can be used to um, link multiple tables together side by side so that they can be filtered and uh, sorted and, um, and things like that. Um, but you can also um, link sets of results top to bottom. And uh, let me show you an example of doing that. So here's an example from the IMDB database. I'm going to go ahead and open that and I have some tables here. And I'm going to cover all of these tables in more detail later on. But to keep things simple, um, I'm just going to look at title basics, title directors, and title writers. So let's look at how the information in that database is organized. So use IMDB. Put a go here as well. And select top. 50 star from title basics select top 50 star from title directors select top 50 star from title writers and I actually need one more table so select top 50 star from name basics. So those are the four tables I need for this example. I'm going to go ahead and execute those four statements. I have to use IMDB first and then I'm going to execute these four statements. So what do I get? So for title basics I get um, a show. So here's the primary name of the show. Here's the original name. Um, the type of show, so this will be a short, a TV series, a TV episode, a movie, um, and so on. Um, there's this tconst field. So this is an ID for the show. And this is going to be unique value that's different for each show. And then some additional information like um, the year it was produced or the first year it was produced if it's a series. If it's a series that has an end date, this will be the end year and the runtime in minutes. So this is basic information about a show. And then in title directors, I have a pair of values. So tconst is the ID of a show. nconst is an ID for a person. So each person is going to have a different nconst. And actually, if I scroll down and look at name basics here at the bottom, so here's name basics. I see that in name basics, I have an nconst, which is an ID for a person. I have the name of the person, the year they were born, and if they've died and I have a record of that, then the death year. Otherwise, I'm going to end up null there. We've seen this table before. And then title writers is same organization as title directors. So for title directors, that's whether the person directed the show. And for title writers, it's whether the person wrote the show. Now I can link these tables together using join. So select top 50 star from title basics. Join title directors on title basics dot tconst. So the tconst column value from title basics has to equal title directors dot tconst, the tconst value from title directors. And putting the name of the table with a dot is called qualifying the column or qualifying the field name. And I need to do that because there's a tconst column in both of these tables, and I need to specify which one I'm talking about. If I don't put that title basics dot there, I get a little warning that this is an ambiguous column name because it appears in both tables. So go ahead and execute that. So here's the information from title basics. Here's the information from title directors. And then if I want to get the name of the person here, then I also have to add join name basics on 
and then title directors dot inconst equals name basics dot inconst. So the person in the title directors table match to this person in name basics. And then like so. So I see that Ingmar Bergman directed the movie It Rains on Our Love. Now I can simplify the results a little bit if I'm all if all I'm interested in is the primary title and the name of the director. I can just select that information. So let's do top 50 primary title. And let's go, um, what's the name of the name? Primary name. And then I'm going to add one more field. I'm just going to add the word director as role. And if I execute that, here's what I get. So I get primary title, it rains on our love, primary name, Ingmar Bergman, and the role of Ingmar Bergman was as a director. Now I can do the same thing with um, title writers. So I'm just going to copy this query, and pretty much all of it is going to look the same, except here I'm going to change the role to writer. And instead of using title directors, I'm going to use title writers. So I have to change that here as well. And change that. It's exactly the same structure. So now if I execute this one, so here's the title. Here's the name of the writer along with the writer. So I see that uh, um, these are all reviews, so not very interesting. But let's go ahead and pick a particular show. So I'm going to go ahead and add, oh, uh, let's do Apocalypse Now. So that's a famous Francis Ford Coppola movie. So let's go ahead and say where primary title equals Apocalypse now. So here's the writers for Apocalypse Now. It actually had a team of writers. And then I can do the same thing if I want to know the directors. I can just go ahead and add this up here. And I should actually probably go ahead and say primary title is in the title basics table. Since there's only one table I'm accessing here that uses primary title as a column, I don't really need to specify that, but since I'm doing it everywhere else anyhow, I might as well continue. So here are both directors and writers associated with Apocalypse Now. So a bunch of different directors worked on it and a bunch of different writers worked on it. And I can get those results coming back using joins. Um, but then what if I just want one set of results coming back that includes both directors and writers, and then I want to order that result set by name? Um, I can use something called a union to do that. So here's my first query, here's my second query, all I need to do to add a union is get rid of that semicolon, add the keyword union, and execute this. So this whole thing is now one big SQL statement. So here's the title, here's the primary name, and here's the role. And then if I had another table like title principles that I wanted to merge in, let's go ahead and look at title principles.
So this one has a T const, an N const, a category. So the person worked on the show, and here was their role. Um, and then job is additional detail under category. So cinematographer, director of photography, you can be assistant producer, under producer, and so on. Um, and then if it's an actor, if the job is an actor, actress, then characters is going to include the role that the person worked on. So if I want to merge this information into the original query, I can add another union and select. I don't actually need these top 50s anymore because I'm only looking at Apocalypse now. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out the top 50s. So this is going to be all the directors, all the writers, but only for Apocalypse Now. And then the same thing here. So primary title. Actually, let me go ahead and I'm going to copy the select statement because most of it's going to be the same here as well. So I want primary title, primary name. Then the role here, this is actually going to be category. And then the table that I'm merging with is now principles. And let's go ahead and fix those two spots as well. Like so. Now I have a little issue here because uh, when I did my first two queries, I capitalized director and I capitalized writer, and so I get, you know, one up and one down. So to match what's in the title principles, let me change that to lowercase. And same with writer. And then I'm going to go ahead and execute that union again. OK, now you'll notice that when I do a union, it's finding any duplicate rows and it's only showing one copy of them. So this is basically like a select distinct by default. When you union, it only returns the distinct rows. And so you only get each combination once, which is kind of useful. Um, if for some reason you actually do want like the same row appearing multiple times, if it's in multiple tables that you're unioning together, then you can do a union all like so. And now I expect I'm going to get duplicate rows for director and writer. like so. So actually let's order this by primary name. Oh, I'm gonna, yeah, so it's not ordered by primary name. So let's go ahead. The way I order all this is at the very end, the last one, that's where I put the order by. like so. So that's going to order all the results that have been unioned together. Okay, and now we can see that the same person is appearing multiple times. One director from title directors and one director from title principals. So let me go ahead and take that union all, take the all out. So I only get distinct rows. I'm going to leave the same sort order. Execute. So here are all the persons who worked on the show, which I've got as a union from three different tables. So in order to do a union, um, you can basically union any two sets of results together as long as both select statements have the same number of columns and the data in each column has to be the same type. So this is all text data 
And so this all matches and there's no problem unioning it. Um, if I had a numeric value in one column and I tried to union that with a piece of text, then I'd have an issue. So the column value has, the type has to be the same and the number of columns has to be the same. But if that's true, you can basically put any set of, you know, of whatever together into one query and it will syntactically be valid. Whether it's meaningful or not, that's up for debate. And we'll actually see, um, I'm going to call it a misuse of that ability towards the end of the course when we talk about SQL injection. And we're going to look at how union can be used to find out information about a database that you're not supposed to be able to find out um, in some cases. So that was the first way of merging results top and bottom using union. Um, another thing you can do is let's say that I wanted to find only people on Apocalypse Now who both acted, I'm sorry, who both wrote and directed. So I want to include everybody who's in both the actor and the, uh, I'm sorry, both the writer and the director table, but not only people who directed and only people who wrote. So I'm going to start with this part of the query. So here's the writer and here's the director. I'm going to copy that part. And let's paste that in. And I'll add an order by primary name. So here's writers and directors. And this is not going to include writers, directors, and people who both wrote and direct. So here's only writer, only director, only writer, only director. This person both wrote and directed. If I want to get the people like Dennis A-Link here who both wrote and directed, I can use, instead of union, I can use intersect. Maybe intersection. Let's uh, execute it and see if it gives me an error or not. And the reason these aren't matching is because director and writer don't match. So let's go ahead and say writer slash director and writer slash director. So now they're going to match and it's going to be considered an intersection. And there we go. So we have four people on Apocalypse Now who were both writers and directors. And you see it filtered out everybody who was only one or only the other. And then finally, you can take the list of people who directed but didn't write. So if I want the people who directed but didn't write, then I can say only, oops, let's say only directors. And then I'm going to exclude people who also wrote. And I'm just going to get rid of this because it's making my life more difficult. So it should be accept. So this part of the query, this returns everybody who directed and I get nine people. This part of the query is everybody who wrote, and actually I get 15 people. And if I execute this whole thing, that should be, let's see, five people who directed but did not write. So this is the people who directed but did not write. 